There's a whole vast region here that's known as the Golden Triangle anyways, and there's so much ore in it, it's just unbelievable. I think I have found British Columbia's most pristine little ghost town. You guys gotta see it. I was the only guy living down here for years, you know, and, uh, and even me and my wife way back in the early 80s for a couple of winters, there was one little old lady down by the creek and one way down at the end, on the other end past the Hudson Bay building and, and me and her are up on the hill here and that was, that was a big population in downtown here. Telegraph Creek was the getting off point or the, the last part of the river for the gold rush days. Boats couldn't get up to Telegraph in the beginning because of Buck's Bar down around the corner here, there was rapids there. But they eventually blasted a few rocks out and were able to get the big boats up to Telegraph. The Victoria was the main meeting grounds for all of the people that would hang around during the winters and learn about where the next great gold strike was type thing, you know. But Seattle, there was a lot of the boats even that were built in Seattle and that started out from down there, eh? They would come out of there and come all the way up the ocean and then and then up the river, yeah. Telegraph is connected by river to Wrangell, Alaska. In the beginning, fur traders and, and Hudson Bay Company and looking for furs and then it kind of transferred into uh, prospectors and, and gold discovery. So there was an, another route to the Klondike, so to speak, right? It's 165 miles, all right, from Wrangell to here. And it was pretty much a four day trip for them to come up and a lot of cords of wood. Sometimes there were certain places when the water was real high and tough going where they had to actually hook on winches till they had pins in the bedrock. And they would take go out with a little boat and then take the cable and hook on and they would winch themselves up until they got through the bad spot and then they'd carry on from there kind of thing. And different water levels and stuff like that, eh? But they could go all the way down in one good long day. <laughs> yeah. At one point in the height, like 1898, the height of the gold rush stuff, there was like 10,000 people in the area, right? all seeking to get inland to the gold fields and, and what have you. There were Scotchmen here, Englishmen here, there's all kinds when it, when it comes to looking for gold, you know. A lot of the people that lived here and supported the, the building of the line and all the, 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 the non-Taltans relied heavily on the Taltans for survival through the winter. So the last boat would come up in, in sometime in October and you'd never see another boat until late May next year type of thing, right? You know, when you needed something to eat, you had to go hunt to get it, or fish to get it, or whatever, you know, like uh, you could buy some stuff out of the stores, but of course, interesting to say the stores actually bought meat from the people back in them days, but uh, no, I think it was a good, just basic, simple, you know, hard working, uh, simple life, you know, like, yeah, would have been great. Once the whole gold thing fizzled out, you know, because the big thing was getting to here and Dees and, and on and on, right? And then, I mean, then basically afterwards, it's just the locals that were here, right? And most of them were all up top, eh? And so with the boats not running anymore, you know, none of that stuff happening anymore, it just kind of fizzled away, eh? The first vehicle came in in 1928. 
So I guess he thought it was some kind of a road by then, but you can bet it wasn't much. In the 40s, Telegraph became a transport hub for supplies to Watson Lake. He even hauled all the asphalt to build the airstrip in Watson Lake because of the World War II situation. Uh, came up the Stikine in 45 gallon drums. Well, they would barge stuff to telegraph and then pack train it to Dees Lake and back on a barge at Dees. Down the Dees Lake and down the Dees River to the yard and, and then truck to the point where, the, where they actually built the airport. Imagine that! All in 45 gallon drums. Yeah, I guess they were stacked as high as you could stack them all the way up the hill. My father-in-law remembers he was a young fella then, and how high all of that, those things were piled, yeah. And that's really when the road really got punched through, was then, because they needed to get a lot of freight to Watson Lake in a big hurry. A lot of these lots are like 6,000 or 6,900. I'd love to see some of them, like the old hospital up there uh, bought by somebody. It, it's owned by the actual RCMP right now. And there was a bunch that were owned by school district at one time. There was old teachers and stuff. They got rid of them. It's reverted back to the Crown. And uh, there were some that were not actually deeded, but uh, leased properties and things like that. It would be nice to see somebody actually fix up some of them. So many of them are getting run down because there's still the main town up top and everything. So there's still people here all the time, you know, not like those old ghost towns that everybody just disappeared. We still have a town site up top, right? And, and of course, in the summer down here, there's still lots of coming and going. The maintenance is, is a, a, a big part of keeping an old building running. So there's daily issues, be it water or wastewater or chairs or rodents, <laughs> right? I always say there's always something to do down in Telegraph. There's always a job that needs to be fixed, like if it's not the stairs, you need to get an extra step changed or repainting something that's gotten too faded or even where I'm helping demolish, there was an old building up there that I'd gotten from like the 70s, an avalanche that came in and just crushed it against a tree. And so we spent like two weeks just making sure to clean it up so that it doesn't disrupt anything else around here. There's always work to be done. I know that at one time, like there was many sets of stairs too. that went from one flat up to the next type thing, you know. And they were all maintained by the Department of Public Works. And they kept them up and they kept the walk walls up and everything and so I don't know what year it was that they quit funding all that, but it's been a long time, I know that. Lots of them are just coming down now, you know. I grew up in Calgary, Alberta. This is my mom's everything. She came up here when she was a kid. My grandma was born here. I can point out the house that she was born at and then the house that she lived in. Everyone knows everyone here. It's not even that everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows everyone's dog. And somewhere like Calgary, it's like, you don't know everybody. You don't, you, you can, I'd be going on the subway and it's like, I don't know anyone here. It'd be, it's almost a shock when you do see someone you recognize. Well, here, it's, you can see the family tree. These are people I never really knew, but it's just interesting to think that I have so many roots down here, I didn't even know. And it's important to remember those things. There is much more than just the city. There is much, much more than all the crowded people and all the random things and all the making sure you're in the nice house and all that. You gotta come here and realize there are so much more simple things that are still just as good. Just turned off the highway in Dees Lake, got some fuel, got some supplies. $2.46 a liter for diesel. <laughs> Going forwards from here, it's all new territory for me and we're heading down into Telegraph Creek. Spot that's been on the list for a couple of years but I could never do it in the motorhome because 
Supposedly there's a pretty gnarly hill dropping down in there. Should be no problem for the new rig. Either way, looking forward to checking it out. Just starting down the hill. 20% grade is definitely steep, but I've been told what the challenge is with this hill is the length. Now brakes do a great job slowing and stopping your vehicle, but they don't like to be ridden. Lucky for me, I have the exhaust brake in this rig, so as long as I'm patient with the hill, I should be able to do the whole thing with just the exhaust brake. I've been seeing horse poop all the way coming down the hill. I just hit a little plateau here. There's two wild horses. I mean, I'm assuming they're wild. I don't know why else they'd be here. Beautiful big horses. Let's see if I can get a shot without spooking them. I often wonder if wildlife ever stops to enjoy the view. This friggin' guy's just taking it in right now. He seems at least a little bit domesticated, or at least curious in me. I'm gonna see how close I can get. I'll bring the GoPro for you guys. Hey, you're a big boy, huh? You want a pet? Hmm? Look at you. Big boy. Uh huh. Hmm. What a good boy. These must be domesticated horses out here. I don't know. There's five of them actually. There's three in there, and then this guy. Let's see another one there. What a beautiful place. What a good boy. All right, let's make our way down the hill. This was a nice stop. goats on the side of the mountain here. This is unbelievable. It's like dropping, it's like driving right down into another country. I gotta stop and get a shot of these goats for you guys. Those goats were cool, but this road is unbelievable. <laughs> it's cliff on either side and what looks like two different rivers. Never seen anything like it before. Looks like I can drive right over there. Wow. I don't know how I'm gonna get further than this this season. Wait till you guys see 
the place I'm pulling on to right now. This is it. This is where I live now. It's very difficult to film this in a way that's gonna translate how beautiful it really is. Look at this. Just vertical cliff on that side. And the structures left behind from the lava is just incredible. Look at this one. I think this is the Taltan River here flowing into the Stikine. Nice clear water. I knew it was gonna be nice down here just from what everyone said. I had no idea it would be this nice. The plan was supposed to be just a couple days down here. Don't know what it's gonna turn into. I think it's gonna be more than a couple days. The drive here is something that it's hard to explain to people. I always say, you gotta drive it yourself. I started driving here when I was 16 when I just got my license. So I learned my driving on these roads and some people will come up here driving and some of those cliff sides, you're, you're driving on the road here and it's a one way lane where it's supposed to be two cars coming and you can look and over and you're like, that's a cliff. Like it's a straight drop down from the drive there. I think for a lot of people, I mean, the first 50 kilometers are like, What's Telegraph Creek Road all about? It's just a windy mess of corners right now, right? And then you come around a corner at Tuya and you're like, oh shit, right? There's a canyon and oh wow, look at how beautiful it is. So the last 40 kilometers is, is spectacular. You have to see it. You, you've got to experience it. You get to see those flat drops. It almost looks like if you took a knife to the ground and just cut it. And it's just flat. Okie dokie, I'm ready to rate the road. This thing gets a friggin' 10 out of 10. This is awesome. Just rolling in, and the last little drop down into the ghost town is pretty spectacular in its own. Drop right down this little river valley in between the cliffs. It's a beautiful drive. What a beautiful day for a ghost town adventure and what a beautiful ghost town to adventure obviously i've been here for several days filming <laughs> but when i did my walk around to film all the old buildings i only filmed the outside with the exception of the old hospital so i'm really looking forward to getting inside and actually checking these things out it's a pretty big area to walk around so we're going to do it as quick as possible hopefully without missing anything. And I'll kind of teach you guys what I learned along the way. A lot of these are owned by people. I think these first three are owned and these are owned. This is the old original telegraph office. I believe out of the entire telegraph line, there's only two or three of these left in existence. Everything else is rotted away, but this one's actually in really good shape. We'll do the bottom row first because these are the folks that helped me with the video, did the interviews and whatnot. This is the Stikine River Song. There's a lodge and restaurant down here and it was the old Hudson's Bay building. Used to be down at Glenora on Hudson Bay Flats and they moved it up here on the ice and then reassembled it. And in the summertime, you can stay in there as well as come down for a salmon burger. 
I think they have a couple other things on the menu, but <laughs> that's what we talked about anyways. This was an old mechanics shop and Andrew came and gave me a bit of a tour after our interview. But when they first started doing their cleanup, there was old leaf springs and all kinds of stuff just covering the walls. They're doing this dismantle because that back bank is actually starting to cave in the building. Andrew was pretty proud to show me this truck and I understand why. This is his great grandfather's old truck sitting here in actually really good shape. Look at the size of the leaves on this thing. Holy smokes. That's a monster leaf pack. You could put a Bigfoot on that bad Sal. <laughs> I don't know what exactly that is. 40 something Chevy maybe. Now we're getting over to Mickey's side of the ghost town. I think these are old boat storage sheds. Wow. <laughs> oh, there's a staircase going up to the top. Cool old building, but it's not supported by much, so won't be going in there. A lot of other folks come here because you can still go in the church. So we'll take a little look. This sign is on here. It's not accurate. <laughs> they don't do services anymore. Building's in great shape. Look at this little chipmunk. <laughs> I almost stepped on him on the way in. Didn't even see him until he scurried out of the way. Okie dokie, let's start hiking up. Some of these are privately owned, some of them are not. So we'll just be respectful in each one. Doing a quick backtrack. You guys are not going to believe what I found freaking second one this year. <laughs> Dell's Propane out of Williams Lake with the old phone number. <laughs> That's crazy. I wonder what that thing's doing all the way up here. Dell's Propane. That's one of our gas stations in Williams Lake. That's hilarious. Can you believe it? Still latched shut. All right, old stairs. I need you to work just at least one more time. Whew. <laughs> what an odd thing on the floor. Looks like it's been dripping out of the ceiling, but I don't see any marks in the ceiling. I know a couple of years ago they had uh, this river all washed out. Wonder if it flooded the building and filled it with mud. I'm gonna try and cross over here. I have no strategy as to how I'm gonna get to all these places. We're just gonna zigzag back and forth from one side to the other, bottom to top. But I have not even seen this one up close yet. Oh yeah, it is locked, so somebody owns this one still. Shame some vandals have came and broke the windows out though. So that's the only other one on this side I wanna to get to. We'll go around and up. The road I'm walking on 
continues behind me to another little section of town called Dry Town. I think I'll do that in the next video. So what I've been told about this one is that it was recently purchased and then they started doing some work to it and realized it was a little bit further gone than they had thought. So I don't know if that work has been abandoned or what the plan is now. I like those dovetails though. There is definitely another structure here at some point. Old motorbike over there looks like an 80s something. Look at that rock wall. Well, I just love that old color. <laughs> and those layers of trim. One thing I noticed right away, looks like to access the upstairs, there's, you have to come through a second door on the outside. I wonder why they would have done that. Oh, wow. Look at that window. Just cut in there with the angles. Oh, it's a shame I can't, like look at this staircase. There's no way I can go higher up here, but I can see old newspaper up there. Oh, I'd love to have a closer look at that. There's just no way to do that safely. <laughs> look at the floor. Just not worth the risk. Up top we have three very interesting buildings in a row. This one's the old hospital, and then it was a church for a little bit. I was told that this was the First Nations manager's house. So he was in charge of all the First Nation people here. But look at this piece of real estate. Just a prime view. Been really looking forward to a closer look inside these ones up top here. And uh, downstairs. I was not expecting that. <laughs> Once again, don't have a flashlight today. <laughs> well, for the lack of a roof, I'm surprised it's in the condition that it is. I mean, it's not good by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not terrible. Oh, I love this fireplace. That's cool. Wow, this last room looks so different from any of the others. Fair bit of sag there. <laughs> Let's go take a look at the hospital. Yeah. Good look at that stone chimney there. Odd little room this is with filing cabinets built right in to the wall. Another downstairs. <laughs> no flashlight. 
Jeez Louise. Everyone's gonna be angry. Record player. That's kind of neat. Oh, it's nasty. What the heck? There's an upstairs here somewhere. Oh, right here. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Ooh. I don't know. They told me it was a hospital in a church looking kind of brothel -y. What an absolute spook fest. Full of gravel or something. I did, a oh yeah, definitely gravel. <laughs> I did ask Mickey about this. He said that there was a pilot that lived here for years and he's guessing these are just old fuel barrels that he started making a retaining wall out of. Don't know for sure, but they've become planters. <laughs> Well, this is odd. There should be a door, I'm guessing right here, to the other side. I wonder why this house is split like that. Some type of printer. Oh no, oh man, what a shame. This one looked like it was in really good condition from the outside. Not so much from in here. That's too bad. Ooh, creaky. <laughs> Let's see if we can find our way into the other section of this house. This is looking very churchy. There's a certain look to this old building that I really enjoy. I hope I didn't overdo the shots in the video. Something I couldn't capture properly with the camera is this thing, big water tower. What a beautiful building though. But there's much more to see. Let's head back down. So that is officially everything on this side of the creek. This is the old hospital or nursing station. It was told to me in two different ways. Nobody knows why they quit using that one and went to this one, but that was the only purpose this one ever served. And I came in here and I ended up getting just a couple shots for the video and it just looked so crappy destroyed like this. I quit filming in here, but one thing I did notice 
is the printing on some of these boards. Look, says Telegraph Creek. So they must have had a mill here on site. S.D. Sampson, Indian superintendent. Interesting. I was told that a very religious man purchased this property or this building in this property and put religious stuff all over signs all over this thing i like this old truck though it's sitting up on a wooden platform not the best spot for it and a uh, bit of an optical illusion but it's actually very high up so i can't get in any closer for you but there's all kinds of stuff buried in here look at that there's a canoe there what well, looks like the back of an ambulance, but I'm just not sure. But look at how high up that truck's sitting. I can understand why he would put it up there, because then you can work on it, but the structure is <laughs> way smaller than I thought. Maybe somebody will come take it off of there before she falls. Before we head up the other side, I just got to mention, this truck looks a fair bit newer, but Frega, nice truck sitting here. This one looks like it's probably owned by somebody. We'll keep moving on. There's holes in a bunch of these windows. I don't know why people have that desire. Once you break a window, it's pretty much got an expiration date. Oh, it's a friggin' mess anyways. Gross. <laughs> a little bit of lead-based paint. Oh, wow. Place that friggin' dump. And I can hear a critter scurrying. That is for sure going to be a background up there. Oh, man. Take a little peek. Hmm. I think this is one of my favorite buildings here. It's got this beautiful fascia on it. But you'll see when we get up to the next row, there's basically no roof left on it. So just rotten inside. This one's starting to get overgrown, but it is owned by somebody. It's in decent shape, so just walk on past. There's a little bit more of the roof left than I remembered actually, but you can see the ridge cap is gone all the way. Letting a lot of moisture in there. Look at this little guy, barely hanging in there. It has been recently purchased by somebody. They put a brand new galvanized roof on it, which is great but it's got these broken windows and you can just smell the pack rats there like this far outside I can smell the pack rats in there oh, looks not terrible actually think of all the buildings to salvage this one would be the most successful so hopefully whoever purchased that will do something with it but this is basically the top of town here i think there's this one last building to check out and that should be it oh yeah bit of a fixer upper for sure Throw a new coat of paint on her, she'll be good. Well, if you made it this far in the video, thank you. 
And a special thank you to the Taltan First Nations for sharing this land with us. Absolutely beautiful home you have, and I can't wait to see some more of it. Most of all, thanks for watching everybody. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints, and I'll catch you on the next one. So